Hey, hey guys, uh, so today I'm going to answer the question, what's some advice uh, to prevent a startup failing? Now, we often think uh, about all the issues early on. How do you get traction? How do you start off? How do you find customers? What's your value proposition? But for a lot of startups, the problem actually comes later. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about my, my friend Anne and her, and her company. Now, Anne isn't her real name and her company is not a childcare centre. Uh, I'm just using those to, to give you a bit of a clue. Um, so basically what Anne did is she started off a set of childcare centres. They were very, very popular. Anne was absolutely amazing at looking after the kids, looking after the parents and bringing in the sales. And she went from one starter, one centre to two centres to, to three centres. And it was going super well. Yeah, and that that reached a point. She got to four and five. She she did, went through some government courses on how to be an entrepreneur, how to bootstrap, how to grow grow the business, and then it all started falling apart. And she she rapidly went from five centres to four to three, and then down to two. And even then, she couldn't keep uh, manage payroll. She couldn't um, couldn't pay the rent or the bills. People were suing her left, right, and centre. It was a disaster. So what went wrong and why did it go wrong? Well, there were, I think there were about five ways the, that she went wrong. And these are pretty typical of a lot of entrepreneurs. The first thing was um, lack, of, lack of management. At one point, Anne had 100 people reporting directly to her. Everybody worked for her. There was no supervisors. There was no junior management. There were no team leaders. Everybody worked for her. And that meant she was massively overloaded. She didn't know what she was meant to be looking at and she was constantly firefighting, fielding queries and fielding people's problems. And so getting a system of, of management where you give people control over other people to make sure that things happen effectively and consistently is really, really important. The next thing was the, the delegation. And delegation is closely linked to, to management. Here, what we're talking about is you need to give people a task. You give people a task, that's fairly straightforward. Can you go and do this? That is not delegation. That's just telling people somebody to go and do it. Because what you need to do is you need to check, have they done it? Have they done the task correctly? And then you also need to check how can we improve the ability of the person or the ability of the process to deliver that task. And what Anne did, she, she missed out all of that. So she just asked people to do stuff and then was shocked, horrified, upset and angry when the stuff didn't get done. There was no feedback mechanism and the feedback mechanism is what really helps to keep, or keep people accountable. Very, very critical. The next thing was the, the finance. Uh, it, was, it was absolutely brilliant. She was bringing um, customers in, customers were paying well, and she thought she was making money. The only problem was she couldn't figure out why at the end of the, each month she had less money than she had before. When I, when I spoke to her the first time, she said that she reckoned her margins were about 10%. So for every $100 that she sold, she made about $10 in profit. The actual thing, when we looked at the figures, was that she was making about $7 in loss for every $100 that she sold. So the more effective she was at getting uh, customers in, the more money she, she was losing and the faster that she was losing it. So when we're, when we're starting off, um, getting a proper accounting system, getting an accountant in, getting the bookkeeping right may seem an awful lot of time and, and energy especially when you're growing fast because you've got the money coming in it's great money's on the back bank uh, you can see it on the balance sheet awesome we're okay but likely you're not there's a lot of expenditure that needs to happen that isn't being accounted for and there can be a huge hole in your finances and Anne's mistake was that she had no visibility over her companies over her startups um, financial viability for a long time Next point is culture. 
to start with uh, Anne wasn't really sure how her business was going to work so she went out she hired the cheapest cheerfulest people that she could could find and, and run with that and it worked she got customers in they, they were happy the problem was she kept on doing it and they kept on leaving and the, the the employee retention was pretty bad in fact she was getting through her entire staff four times a year average uh, length of stay was about three months and that that just caused so many problems um and what she she done is she never said this is the culture this is the type of company that i want to have because if she had she'd have realized that hiring cheap and cheerful people wasn't what wasn't a good fit for what she wanted to do have as a business so when she sat down and she figured out this is the culture that i want and then hired people who fit that culture then suddenly the culture changed, the performance changed, and customer satisfaction and uh, revenue per, per user, revenue per customer massively increased. Um, vision. She started off, she didn't know it was gonna work. I wanna run a car childcare center. And she got to 235. And she's like, well, where are we going with this? What is the, the end goal? Um, another friend started a uh, school a few years ago and she, she was very, very clear. I want to create the equivalent of an English grammar school in Malaysia and I want to create the equivalent of a Cheltenham Ladies College in Malaysia and they must be as good as the originals in the UK. And that was an absolutely clear, focused vision. And it's taken her 30 years to deliver it and it's absolutely superb. And on the other hand, doesn't have a vision. I want, to, I want to look after children. I want to give them uh, a good education. Yeah, it's nice, it's fuzzy. She didn't get that, and consequently, she was making lots of decisions that were sensible in themselves, but overall, they added, uh, added up to a mess that wasn't taking the company somewhere. So now, she's um, got something like, I want to create a great kindergarten that gives working class kids the same start in life that middle class kids have. And that is very, very powerful. It says a lot and it drives every decision that she's making from here on now. And finally, leadership. Um, let me just check what I, what I wrote. Yes, so, so leadership. Anne was absolutely brilliant out in the, out in the trenches working with people. Uh, the staff, with the children, with the parents. That is why people bought. They bought because of her, not because of the company or, or anything else. Now, when Anne, sort of the, the company got a bit bigger, Anne then went back into uh, the management. She was in head office. She was very unapproachable. She was always buried in paperwork and tax returns and all that kind of stuff. And the business started falling apart. Now, Anne, made the decision a couple of months ago that she was going to spend 90 percent of her time doing what she loved in the places that she loved and she would hire people to do the boring management stuff that she didn't like yeah she knew where she wanted to go she'd drive it and that again has transformed the business and helped to turn it around and she's now back to adding more more centers so i think the the big message that you you can learn from Anne is that when you start a startup, a lot of it's uncertain, a lot of it's confusing, all right? Uh, and you make lots of ad hoc decisions. You do the best that you can and you keep on going on like that. But there comes a point when you have to start acting like a big company. You have to become more mature, more, more responsible, sort of grow, grow a bit of a beard. And if you don't do that, the problems mount up and mount up and mount up. And they might be masked by sales and good revenue and growth and user numbers, but you're on a very, very fragile foundation. It's a big soap bubble and poof, it bursts, just like uh, what happened, happened to Anne. So as soon as you know that your startup is growing, that it's looking successful, then you need to start building the infrastructure and the foundations of a proper, business that is going to support it where it is now and where it needs to go in the future.